Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Inside Vaping, your weekly resource for vaping news. Our show airs live on Tuesday nights from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time via YouTube live event at theownpage.com slash live. The show consists of two distinct segments, the first hour streaming right here on YouTube. The second uncensored hour of the show airs exclusively on the Quest Vaping Network at www.vapers.tv slash Quest Vaping. Um, hopefully you guys have realized that the live page, uh, the plumes page, the chat is actually working. That's great. So we're very thankful to them for getting that going. Um, and it makes it a lot easier. So kudos to them for getting that working. Of course, I am joined, as always, by my co-hosts here, Ed and Dane. So we'll go ahead and transition over. How are you guys doing tonight? Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank I'm, you very much. It's great. Just having another great Tuesday evening with my boys. Yes, indeed. Now, one of the things we want to stress, because we did notice last week we kind of had a fragmentation. Some people were still logged into YouTube chat. We'd like to get everybody over on the own page chat, especially tonight. We do have a straw poll we'd like you to participate in a little bit later here. And uh, YouTube doesn't allow links. It makes it easier for us to keep track of questions if you have any questions for us. So if you can go, go ahead and go over to the own page slash live, ownpage.com slash live, that would be great. Um, and Dane, of course, there was some epic football this weekend. We do have to touch on this briefly. Um, Super Bowl is coming up. Of course, we did have the uh, the Patriots and the uh, who did they play? That, that, I, I don't know. Think. Some some team from the East Coast. <laughs> so yeah, like a, a team with horses or something, right? No, they didn't play them yet. <laughs> that that will be that's coming up. We have the Patriots Colts. Showdown. Yeah, and for those that don't know, James is a very big Indianapolis Colts fan. Yes. A very big Indianapolis Colts fan. What are you trying to and say I, here? And I, I am a, a <laughs> Patriots fan. So it is Battle of the Co hosts this weekend. Um, I'm sure I'm going to hear a lot of smack via my cell phone from uh, Mr. James there over the weekend. No, it, it depends on how badly they get beaten. Obviously, the Patriots have been dominant this year, so. Um, I'm not expecting too much, but at the same time, I got faith in my team. I think they're going to make it a uh, shootout. So, Ed, um, what did you get this week? Did you get any vape mail? Anything new going on this week? Um, no. I don't think I got anything this week. I know you got a light because you were showing off a bunch of old stuff on camera, getting some close-ups for us. Uh, one of the things that... I had a couple people comment on one of my YouTube videos about those scissors. Yes. And I know you have a pair that are from Fiskars. Of course, I have the small... Ed actually gave me these. And yeah. uh, I need to clean them up because they're starting to show a little bit of signs of wear and tear here. A little bit of rust on them. Of course, I just re-wicked something, so I have some juice on them too. Um, but these work great for cotton. Uh, these are called Thrum Scissors, T-H-R-U-M. I think you said they're listed under a different name, Dane. Yeah. Well like, done. If you search on Amazon, they're also called um, Thread Scissors. Yes. And I'll show you why they're called Thread Scissors. Because here's a piece of Japanese cotton. Let it focus on my hands. Go You know, if this is all, like, weirdo, it cuts it perfectly straight it's really like clean too. Pair that's kind of for travel these are the ones I got off of Amazon and they these cut really good too but they're a little bit thicker so like if yeah. you're one that like let, let's just say back in the pro tank days when you're rebuilding pro tanks and you want to cut that really close look at that so these scissors cut cotton and silica very very well yeah and, and they the nice thing about those scissors too is they they don't leave any of those threads behind so if you've ever had that irritation of trying to thread a new piece of wick in into a coil <clears throat> and you've got that little thread hanging off and it just won't poke through these yeah. work great for that too and so. they're inexpensive um, getting them from Amazon I think this pair was like maybe three dollars um, if you want to wait a couple weeks 
were on fast tech for like a dollar twenty five. So these are really cheap and they work really well. And they're really sharp. Be careful. <laughs> so uh, no new vape mail for you. No, I didn't get well, I got some stuff I was gonna try and mod. I got this little guy right right here. So it's a 20 or 25 watt device. Got a 510 spring loaded connector on there. Loving the glare. Um, up and down here, but I haven't. I bought two of them, and I've already taken one apart and kind of broke it. Um, but I'm able <laughs> to get a DNA to slide in there in its spot. There's going to be some more modifications to it. Um, and then I got um, this little cloud port, which is stuck right there. This is another one I want to mod as well. This is just about the same size as the Vapor Shark, but yeah, magnetic door too, huh? Magnetic door, and an eighteen six fifty sits right there. Very nice. I am going to tell you that the board in here, it's got the delay, so if it's asleep and you push it and try to vape, you're going to wait about two to three seconds before it wakes up. And I dropped it one time and broke the screen. Well, <laughs> it, it didn't break it. It's just all pixelated and weird now by dropping it one time. So, again, I want to take out these electronics and put in good Evolve electronics. Very nice. So, Dane, what about you? Anything new? No, I got nothing. I got nothing. I, uh, just like Christmas, coal in the stocking, bud. I actually did get something new, and I wasn't thinking about it earlier to mention it in pre-show, but uh, I picked up one of the Segelli 150s, and it's it's a remarkable device. I mean, they did it right. Uh, it's easy to get the door off. It's a magnetic door. I kind of like this little rubberized cover that they've got on it. Battery life has been decent. I've been running it at uh, 45 watts on a .5. Uh, I've got the Derringer on there. And I pretty much get almost a full day of vape time off of it, uh, maybe a little bit more. And uh, I'm impressed. Spring loaded 510 works very nice. Have you seen these, uh, Ed? Which the one? Gally that, 150? That box? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Crazy Eyes has one. Oh no! Wait, no! I take that back. Crazy Eyes has the 100. He doesn't have the 150, but it's a, it's basically it's the same box. Yeah, and honestly, I'm probably never going to go up to 150 watts, um, so I'm, I'm happy with, I would probably be happy with a 100, to tell you the truth. But uh, build quality is really nice. I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. And I believe I picked this up for around 100 bucks. Uh, it was at, uh, the company that makes the tugboat had a sale over the New Year's, and uh, th they had a really good price on it. And right now, somebody in the chat asked what batteries I used in it. Uh, I've got the Samsung 25Rs in here, and they're working very nicely. Uh, seem to have great capacity, uh, charge quickly, and uh, I'm, I'm happy with them as an alternative to the Sony's because I'm kind of running out of these things. I've got a carefully guarded stash of brand new Sony VTC4s that I'm hanging on to. Uh, and I don't believe they're being produced anymore. Uh, that's what everybody tells me. So, uh, Other than that, uh, we're going to cover this a little bit later. I do have a juice line from Creme de la Crema. Uh, this is Mountain Oak Vapors. This is one of their juice lines. And it is diacetyl and AP free. And they do have certificates on their website from Enthalpy. And Dane, you're very aware of enth Enthalpy, um, of course, being yep. with AIMSA. Uh, so uh, you can go up, you can go look at the MSDS testing for all of their different juices in both the Mountain Oak Vapors line, the Mythos line, and the Creme de la Crema lines. And it's nice to have that information freely available. Absolutely. What we're going to attempt to do, and I'm crossing my fingers, I am hoping that Skype does not, not Skype, but uh, XSplit does not crash this week. I don't know how long it's going to take before it crashes. Hopefully it doesn't. But we're going to attempt to show you once again the San Francisco campaign. Uh, they're going on the offensive against e-cigarettes. And uh, they're calling this campaign the Curbit campaign. Let me go ahead and bring that up. And I have the wrong screenshot up here right now. 
the serpent. That's the one. That's that's the serpent campaign. <laughs> serpent. <laughs> the serpent. Uh, so this is their campaign. This is going to be on the all of the BART system, their public transportation system. Uh, so buses and rails, uh, and there's a series of anti e-cig ads that are going to be plastered all over the place in very prominent location and you can see a list of some of the places that vaping is not allowed this is the city of san francisco and these are some of the places it's not allowed the highlighted areas restrooms elevators waiting areas ticket lines public transit buses and trains uh, ticketing areas stairways um, housing authority buildings city parks and recreation areas senior housing and condos covered parking lots uh, there's a whole long laundry list of places that you cannot vape and you can see some of their ads here back off big tobacco we know e-cigarettes are harmful just like cigarettes so these are all and if you look there is a hashtag at the bottom smokeless is not harmless so this is all from sf tobacco free and what's your take on this dane what do you think of this you know, I, I've looked at this over and over and over again, and I just recently visited San Francisco, and uh, this whole campaign really frustrates me. Um, you know, once again, our saviors are on the offensive of the evil product with no real knowledge or scientific data to back up any of its claims. You know, clearly this thing is attempting to appeal to teens, and this campaign is going to gain st some steam, I'm afraid, as you well know being an advocate against anything whether scientifically real or not is now a very cool thing to do and uh james you know i'd guess that the the call to bono and oprah has probably been made as well yeah and you know what the unfortunate thing is you're going to get a lot of people who have very little knowledge of vaping other than what they've been told by the media by the mainstream media and they're going to take this and view it as even more positive affirmation that it's something that is hazardous to your health and deleterious to the general public. Uh, so it's kind of sad to see this. And Dane, we discussed this, and I know there's no way of doing this, but wouldn't it be great, and I think we talked about it last week, if you could get a spot during the Super Bowl, if somebody could get a spot during the Super Bowl just to do a PSA, it wouldn't even be, it, it wouldn't be an ad. It wouldn't be an ad for Blue or Enjoy or any of those companies, which right. is why I know you could never fund something like that because it's so prohibitively expensive. But just to get a PSA out there, kind of refuting some of the common arguments that the ants make. Yeah, just make a big checklist and go down it and, and refute every ridiculous lie that's been told about e-cigs, although that would be a long list and a very long PSA, but you could put at least the top 20 in there and yeah. uh, refute all of those. So what's our first story that we're going to be talking about tonight now that we've got the recap over? It's, it's, lots going on in Utah these days, um, especially Salt Lake County. Um, apparently they've done a health study that revealed some problems with inaccurate e-liquid labeling. Um, it, their press release said nicotine levels listed on labels were significantly different in 61% of those tested. In a study from Salt Lake County Health Department and the Center for Human Toxicology at the University of Utah, researchers found that 73 out of 120 samples, which would be the 61%, at least they know the math, differed by at least 10% from the labeled nicotine content with discrepancies that range from 88% less to 840% more than stated. Wow. I'll read that number again, 840% more than stated. The industry's own American E-Liquid Manufacturing Standards Association, or AIMSA for short, requires that e-liquids produced be within plus or minus 10% of the labeled nicotine content. Um, I'm going to go and refute that almost immediately since I am the chairman of compliance for AIMSA. We do not require. It is a standard that is set for our members to achieve. Um, I will say this. This issue really isn't new. This is the first time a media outlet has reported it, but it's been a dirty little secret in this industry for some time now. Um, 
this is the reason an association like AIMSA is so important. Not only to set the standard for the industry, but to help e-liquid manufacturers stop this type of thing before coming more becoming more widespread. So according to the article SLCOHD, which I don't know what that stands for. Well, let's see. What's what's Salt the Salt Lake acronym? County Health Department. Slicode staff visited all 14 <laughs> vape shops Slicode. in Salt Lake County, as well as 16 <laughs> randomly selected tobacco specialty stores and collected 153 e-liquid samples. 120 of the samples listed a nicotine amount higher than zero and 33 listed the nicotine content as zero um, scant flavor only e-liquids of the 33 samples that listed the nicotine amount as zero and this is key listen to this 32 contained less than 0 0.5 milligrams per mil of nicotine and one sample contained 7.35 milligrams of, of uh, nicotine so these are zero. These are juices that are being sold as zero that contain nicotine. <clears throat> and this is kind of scary because, uh, you know, of course, this is the type of stuff that you're going to have the ants grab onto. They're going to latch onto this and say, well, you know, if, you're, if your samples, if, you're, if your zero nick is contaminated or laced with nicotine, then, you know, obviously your, your process is off. Um, these concerns are one reason why the health department is working this year on a new health regulation that will require a license to manufacture or sell e-liquids in Salt Lake County, said Gary Edwards, executive director of SLCOHD. A regulation will help ensure e-liquid safety standards, including accurate labeling of ingredients and nicotine levels as the presence of childproof caps. You know, James, the timing of this story is still somewhat suspect, in my opinion, because it's Utah. And Utah is looking to pass tough legislation against e-cigs, especially very recently. And they've been trying to eradicate vaping in that state for some time now. So I, I question a little bit of this. Yeah, I, I, would, I would question it, too. And before we continue, the lovely Jeannie Kay has managed to log into chat, which she said is a pain in her ass. So in honor of Jeannie Kay, we're going to play a couple beeps here for Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dane, so in regards to the zero milligram liquids with trace amounts of Nick, do you think this is due to the e-liquid producer reusing syringes, pipettes, etc., that had been used previously to produce liquid with nicotine? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I think it's residual. I think from what we see, I, there's a lot of that happening. Um, the standards are out there, and the standards are written, and they've been written, and they've been up on Ames' site for, for some time, that do that do a lot and go a long way to eradicate this type of thing um but you know some people just choose not to do it what do you, what do you think a long-term solution to just getting that uniformity uh when you're mixing would be you know when it comes to nicotine I, my opinion is this get a nicotine titration machine yes it's going to cost a lot of money it'll be a few thousand dollars but it, this industry is going to be regulated, and rest assured, it's going to be regulated. It's going to be a required piece of machinery anyway. Um, the cost will offset itself over time and will save you a ton, a ton of just peace of mind yeah. in, <clears throat> in the safety of the end product and the consistency of it. You know, and we, we talked about this probably about six or eight shows ago. I know we talked about this because I stopped at a local shop and I picked up a juice and uh, it tasted like menthol and it was not a menthol juice. So, mm -hmm. you know, and it was a house juice line. It was something that they were mixing in the back room. And I realized that, you know, people appreciate the convenience of a custom ratio option or custom nick levels or you know sometimes uh, the amount of flavor that goes into something but um, I don't know that 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 may be an issue for us and it seems to be, be an issue for uh, the industry in general uh, yeah. and uh, it's really burgeoning you're seeing that now uh, some of the legislation that's coming up and we're going to talk about this a little bit later um, this is going to become a big issue 
Um, so yeah, the Nick yeah. titration machine, we've got a picture of it here below my camera. And, mm. um, you know, uh, the investment, the cash investment seems to be minimal compared with uh, the peace of mind that somebody would get from being yeah, able not to only for, Not only for the manufacturer, but for the end user. Um, it's, you know, we, we talked about it and we've, we talked about the e-liquid that I vape and I, I tend to be very, very skeptical towards the safe side when it comes to e-liquid. I really am. I, I like to know the lab that it's being made in and how it's made. Yeah. Yeah. That's your right to know. Yep. For those so um, one of the things we want to talk about here is, um, you know, we look at the high numbers. Okay, we look at that. What was it? Eight hundred and uh, I'm, I'm trying to find it here. Eight hundred and forty percent more than stated. Of course, Correct. we don't know whether they took a zero milligram and came to right. that reading. Uh, right. But does anybody remember the box elder incident? I mean, so, so we, we we had this happen before. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and and I thought that was behind us. I really did. I thought at this point the industry was self-regulating, at least when it came to best practices while mixing. But the reality is, and you know, I, I hate to say this because there's plenty of people that are small mom and pop uh, boutiques or juice makers that I, I love to vape their juice. But I see some of these people who end up on brick and mortar sh store shelves within a very short amount of time. And some of them I have personal contact with and I know that they're working round the clock to fill these orders. And they haven't, sometimes they haven't hired people, they haven't looked into a bigger facility. Um, if you think about the type of liability insurance that you really should carry if you're gonna make this business something that's sustainable and long term. And that's key because I think there's some people that aren't in it for the long term. They're in it for the short term and to see That's how much correct. money they can make. And yes, that is going to cut your profit margin. You know, if, if you if you outsource to a company that does have liability insurance, it's going to cut back on your profit margin. But there's some things that you need to observe for sustainability if you're looking at making it a viable business. Um, obviously, some of the samples collected were house juice lines. And this begs the question, should vape shops mix in the back room I'm aware that this is a polarizing question if you go to this link and I'm gonna try to post this in chat here so that people can just click on it uh, if you go to this link this is a straw poll and I'd like the people in chat if possible to just go ahead and participate and just give your honest opinion I understand uh, you know, I've got a PG sensitivity. As somebody who has a PG sensitivity, it's nice to walk into a shop and be able to have my preferred ratio mixed up on the spot. But from a consistency and safety standpoint, not all shops are going to be able to produce the same consistent dosage. So we're going to direct those in chat to go ahead and participate in the straw poll. If you log into chat and watching the show live, please go and vote for your choice. It's and really, going, I just voted. It was really easy. Yes. You didn't have to register. There are no hanging chads. <laughs> um, and we're going to go ahead and look at that straw poll, look at the results before the end of the show. Um, so getting back to that consistency, Dane, okay? Yep. If I go to a restaurant, okay, and I, there's a couple restaurants that are local to me that they produce excellent food but the consistency isn't there. So if I go there on a Friday night and I order chicken paprikash or whatever the dish might be, okay, it tastes great. I come there back there on a Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening and it tastes totally different. You know, right. you, you have a background in the food industry. Is, yep, is consistency sure important? Absolutely. And here's some of the biggest reasons why it isn't. Because that guy that's cooking it instead of me doesn't have as much vested in that restaurant as I do. He doesn't have as much vested in that dish as I do. I, Even though I've taught him exactly the way I make it and exactly how to make it, 
he doesn't care because he feels that he makes consistently less money than I do, even though I hadn't drawn a salary for three or four years while the doors were open. But that's his perception. So that drop off is very, very common. You know, to me, James, the first and foremost thought on an e liquid manufacturer's mind is the same as your physician's Hippocratic oath, at least to me. Number one, do no harm. Yeah. Get creative with your recipe, sure, but first and foremost, do no harm. Yeah, and we're looking at our straw poll right now, and it's about even. Um, this updates live, so we're at eight votes for yes, they should be able to engage in backroom mixing, and seven votes no. Um, and we're going to talk to you guys about why, um, even from a from a personal standpoint, I think, you know, there's shops that I would trust to mix up my juice in the back room. So from a personal standpoint, I'm okay with it. But from a big picture standpoint, and this is key, from the perception of the public and how this could affect the industry in the future, I'm against it. Um, that doesn't mean you can't have a house juice line. It just means right. don't mix in the back on the fly and exactly. observe the proper precautions. Yeah, make uh -huh. sure the titration on the nick is correct. Make sure that the process is correct. And to me, the process is everything. You know, it's about that process being clean, correct, and concise every single time. And I know that everybody doesn't have the same hand to pour and the same eye to see as, yeah. y you know, e even the person who invented the, in the initial flavor. We've seen it in juice lines. I know you guys have ate them as well as I have. A juice that I bought three years ago can be markedly different in that three-year span every time I buy it. Yeah. And, and Nick Turnell says, from right, from a shop I trust and I have two locally that I trust. And I do, too. I have a shop yep. that's close to me that has a house juice line that is also sold under a label. And I don't hesitate to either buy from the website or go to that shop and buy juice and they mix it up in the back. And I've seen their clean room. I've seen, well, it's it's not a clean room. You know, it's a stainless steel table. They're, they're, they have one of those, and I don't remember what it's called, Dane. It's like an auto decanter for the nicotine dosing. Right, um, yeah. Which I guess would be a step above just using a syringe when you have a multitude of people and again this isn't a bash against the people who are experienced DIYers I know that you know your stuff I'm talking about the fact that you have like a rotating cast of people that are like 18 to 20 that come in their vape shop employees and now they're doing the mixing um, and you know you can't get heavy-handed with some of that stuff or just yeah. buy it yeah, it's the truth. And let's face it, the vape industry, even in shops, the turnover is very similar to restaurants. It happens all the time. You have new people coming in, old people going out, different juice makers happening here and there. It, at a very minimum, have one dedicated juice maker. Yeah. At a very minimum, have somebody studied a set of standards. And I'm not saying that everybody needs to live by AIMSA standards as their law, even though I'm with AIMSA, but have some type of standards. You know, have especially cleanliness. A lot of us have forgotten that something as simple as cardboard particulate matter plus propylene glycol equals poison. I'm sure yeah. a lot of people remember from the 80s the Tylenol scare where people were dying. That's what happened. It was propylene glycol hmm. with, with cardboard particulate in the end product. So and it turned – it's poison. Kzar – or Czar, I guess it's Czar. Uh, Czar made a good analogy here. And uh, they said, it did. I did a pharmacy tech internship in a hospital. Now, when I was, used the word dosage earlier, um, I kind of had an internal struggle with that. But at the same time, that is, that is probably the most accurate depiction of what people who are juice makers or mixologists do. They are right. dosing this product um so you you have to be able to measure accurately um but we're not we're not going to belabor these facts any further uh what i do want to bring up is i'm vaping in in this tank that i've got here i'm vaping uh creme de la crema and this juice is called omerta it's a strawberry dolce strawberry custard this is from mountain oak vapors now i bring this up for a reason 
if you go to Mountain Oak Vapors site, they've got a plethora of different juices available um, from several different lines. And this particular one is diacetyl and AP free. And they have these uh, GCMS test reports from, from Enthalpy available for every juice in their line. And it can show not detected on both AP and diacetyl. Uh, this is an example of a company that has set themselves up for success in the long term. Uh, and, and that's kind of key here when we're having this discussion is, uh, you know, we know these pending regs are coming. We know that these different uh, cities are cracking down on loose juice. Um, and we've got a story from New York that's a prime example of this. Um, so it makes sense to set yourself up for success by doing all of these things, by getting that titration machine, by getting all of your liquids GCMS tested. Again, I understand if you're starting out, that's very difficult. But you can outsource to a different company, have them make your juice. It's going to cut your profit margin. But if you're in it for the long term, it makes sense. Um, so that being said, we're going to move on here. And uh, we've got a story. This is a story from New York. Of course, they have a bill. Uh, this is going before the Senate. It's Bill S 6939 2013. And I will go ahead and try to bring this up here. I don't think I have a picture of the bill. Uh, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and read through part of this here. The title of the bill, an act to amend the public health law in relation to the definition of electronic cigarette or e-cigarette and to amend the general law, the general business law in relation to prohibiting the provision of any quantity of electronic liquid. Purpose, prohibits the sale of e-liquids within the state of New York. So that is an outright ban on the sale of e-liquids in the state of New York. If we read further into the bill, this is what it says. Any entity that sells, offers to sell, or gives away any quantity of electronic liquids will be subject to a penalty of no more than $500 per violation recoverable in an action by an enforcement authority designated by a municipality or political subdivision. Okay, so justification. Um, I'm just going to kind of scan through this. The health effects associated with inhaling the vapor of e-cigarettes are unknown. However, the liquid used to provide the vapor in some e-cigarettes has been found to be harmful and even, even deadly to individuals. What do we notice here, Dane? There, there is nothing in here about closed systems. So obviously those are still right. going to be sold. Um, which we know Big Tobacco wants to see open systems taken off the market entirely. So yep. this is not... This is not a move for public safety right here. It really isn't. Don't be fooled into thinking that. This is their definition, I guess, of e-liquids. E-liquids are a form of nicotine, of liquid nicotine, laced with other chemicals and often flavored. Many e-liquids are made on factory floors, okay, listen to this, or in the back rooms of shops and similar to e-cigarettes, are not regulated by the federal government. The back room of shops. And that's key. Because while I want to be able to get my e-liquid in whatever blend that I want, as soon as I walk into a vape shop, big picture, it's a bad idea. It doesn't yeah. matter if their definition is correct or not, Dane. It doesn't matter. This type of bill, if passed, will be duplicated by cities across the country and used as a template of sorts for their future legislation. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely correct. There's, there's a little reverse engineering scare tactic in play here. You know, highlighting the dangerous active ingredient in, in e-liquid when really it's just simply meant to intimidate and instill fear in potential users the people who really need it and once again misinform the non-vaping public I, this is classic political tactic picking and choosing different arguments and applying them in different ways and making blanket statements because of it and it's it's serious business now in new york yeah well you know it it saddens me to see something like this but 
we knew it was going to happen. I mean, New York has been one of those cities that other cities have looked to. And that's what kind of scares me because, you know, there's, there's lots and lots of vape shops in Chicago as well. And uh, that's close to me. And I've been to a lot of those shops. I've talked to a lot of the owners. And I would hate to see something like this happen there. Um, now, one of the things that we discussed, Dane, in the pre-show is, um, you know, zero Nick is not really mentioned. Right. So Yeah, that, that's going to be a difficult test for them to overcome because I, I suppose you could claim zero Nick on anything and, and say, well, yeah. there's, no, there's no Nick in this. And until they come up with a, a pretty accurate pocket test, which to my knowledge doesn't exist in, at this point in time, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to monitor. Yeah, it's going to be hard for them at a monitor. The other thing, too, is this this is a situation that you have in Australia right now. Um, you know, you, you can sell zero nic. You can buy nicotine for personal use. But you have to be the one to mix it. Mm -hmm. Which, in some ways, I feel is even more dangerous. Yeah. Simply because you don't have the same level of information in the masses. So yeah. if you get somebody that you're trying to get off cigarettes and now if you're not willing to mix up the juice for them, okay, as their friend, uh, now they have a bottle of nicotine and a bottle of doubler or whatever, or their base, and they're going to be the ones mixing it. Uh, so I don't, I don't think this is a good move. I think you're going to hear more incidents, more genuine incidents with the CDC where people are, are, are ending up with nicotine poisoning based on something like this happen. And if they pass this in New York, I predict that they will see that, that they'll see more incidents of people mixing at home and having issues yep. as a result. Because people like to cut corners, too. They're not necessarily going to buy 36 milligram nicotine to make right. their 6 milligram juice. And what about so, elderly patients? You know, what, what about elderly ex-smokers? How, you know, how do they... How do they fall into this fray? You know, it, it's. I, I read a headline earlier today, and I thought that it, it was pretty much the synopsis of exactly how I felt. Uh, the worst e-cigarette is a banned e-cigarette, and and I, it's going to be that way with liquid as well. The very worst e-liquid is a banned e-liquid, and it, what's going to happen are people are going to mis mis mix, and it, there's going to be some catastrophic results there. That yeah. and people are going to be storing nicotine in their house, which they don't do now because they have pre-mixed bottles that they can easily keep out of the reach of children. These things are much, much bigger. All right, so let's check in on our straw poll here. And we are still at 9 and 9, a dead heat. Um, dead even. Yes. And, and I kind of expected this. Again, I said it was a polarizing issue because I understand that people feel passionately about being able to get... Uh, reasonably priced juice from a vendor that they trust in their custom ratio. So that's understandable. But just realize the big picture here. Realize that there are going to be bills coming up that are using that backroom mixing as a reason why um, uh, e-liquids uh, should not be sold. Loose juice should not be sold. Um, so moving on to the next story here. Super T has announced that they are going out of business. Going out of business isn't the best way to put it because Super T is a machine shop and they produce other parts. They have been around since 2009 and they are throwing in the towel. Yesterday, Super T made this post to their blog. Technically, we're not going out of business, just discontinuing the manufacturing of e-cig products. Unfortunately, we've just found with the current climate and influx of Chinese clones and the high cost of U.S. manufacturing, it just isn't viable anymore. Um, the products that you see on their site are now 50% off, so if you want uh, one of the Super T products that is sold there, go check it out. Once they're gone, they're gone. They're going to continue. Uh, somebody is saying they lost sound and picture for a second. Uh, hopefully it's still working. Um, yeah, we're good. Yeah, so uh, go check it out. Uh, they've got some decent deals there. They've got a workhorse horse mod that is very reasonably priced. Um, and they make some pretty nice stuff. You know, Dane, they were one of the originals. And, Ed, I know uh, you followed that as well. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, got a, I got a letter from 
What was the letter about? I don't think you've ever well, told anybody. No, because this device right here, which is now called the BAM, uh, at first was called the Shockwave. Um, I was unaware that Super T was creating a device called the Shockwave. <laughs> so they, uh, Dave sent me a letter saying, hey, we've already got a, we already got the name Shockwave, we've got fans that said blah, 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 that you were calling it this, they brought it to my attention. And if he would have left it at that, I would have been fine. Oh, cool, modern, modern, yeah, no, no problem. I didn't search every single, I did a general search, I didn't find anything called the um, Shockwave. The email continued on t with all this legal crap. You know, well, you know, you know, we named it first, and blah 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 blah, and and, and you know, it doesn't have to be. Tr I'm like, I replied back to him, and I told him, I'm like, look, dude, modern to modern, I'm cool. I got a little list of names. I was gonna name it. I'm like, but you didn't need to add the legal shit stuff. Well, they can say that on 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 <laughs> regular network television. We're good. <laughs> um, why did I go black and white? Okay, never mind. I'm back. <laughs> Black and doing things behind the scenes to try and crash the show. <laughs> yes. So, um, so yeah, um, Super T, um, unfortunately, the device took well over a year to finally come out after my BAM came out. So, um, they're not, and I'm not the only person they've done that to. Yeah, they, they have kind of a, you know, they make a good product, but I was on that pre-order for the Shockwave. Um, their version, not Ed's version. I, I do have a BAM. And that was actually easy to get a hold of because Ed made enough of them. But yeah. Super T just promised these 26650 mods when there weren't many 26650 mods on the market, took money from people in earnest, and then did not produce them for what was it, like a year and a half? Yeah, it was a very. It was, it was crazy. It was a very long wait. Um, yeah. So, moving on to the next story here, we've got some news when it comes to Kanger. Now, obviously, we've talked about the Atlantis and the wicking material, and, you know, I'll leave that up to you whether you want to use the uh, Atlantis or not. Uh, Kanger has some issues with their insulators, apparently. The sub-tank insulators in the rebuildable head specifically, and that is the visible white portion underneath your post, it looks similar to a K-Fun style insulator, if you've ever seen one of those. Um, I've got a Kanger sub-tank. I've been using it with a stock 0.5 ohm heads. It tastes great. Um, it's been working beautifully for over a week now, and the flavor is great. Earlier this week, a guy by the name of T.J. Applin put out a video showing something quite strange happening in his sub-tank. Let's go ahead and play an excerpt from that video. Oh, look at that. That is part of the insulator. Remember, my juice turned this cotton green. So this is proof that this is the insulator. The insulator does not turn colors. Now I'll show you on this side. Let me, let me wipe this off. So this basically right. turned into kind I'll of a goo. Let me show you on this side. Oh, look at that. You can see that on camera. You see it? See that insulator moving? And from appearance, it looks like a solid piece of plastic. But it is not peak. It is not oh, Dalrin. Shit. And it basically really turned into a up. gummy. Well, man, look, there's there's more. All right, this is this is a hazard, guys. So uh, the issue that I see with this is, of course, it's going to mix with whatever juice is in the tank. No, uh, I'm checking so, mine. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say? I'm checking mine right now. <laughs> Flipping it upside down, let it drain a little bit. <laughs> so. Uh, I, I think it's worth noting, of course, that this guy was vaping fluid, and Mad Murdock's radiator fluid is a known tank cracker. Um, and I'm one of these guys. I like to vape citrus <coughs> juices. I like to vape menthols, and I've I've constantly sought out some sort of wonder plastic that does not crack. Uh, my friend Dwayne constantly laughs at me because I keep trying different tanks, and the latest one to succumb to a citrus juice 
was actually the tank for the aqua which has a nice little spider web effect going on at the top of the tank here it is beginning to crack now after only uh, two tanks of juice through it uh, but it's not a good idea it wasn't a good idea for them to use that type of material in this device other than that the sub tanks are fantastic I mean you like yours don't you Ed? Uh, the old, the, yeah, I like the sub tank. I really do. It's a little too airy for me, but you know I can adjust that by just pulling a little slower on it. Um, but yeah, I really, I love my K fun. Yeah. But I just love the fact that I can flip this upside down, unscrew it, one fill it up, but also work on the build if it's half full of liquid, easily. Yeah. So speaking of the sub tank, okay. Um, yes. A lot of people were kind of upset when Kanger came out with the sub tank and it was that funky size. It's what, 25, yeah. 25.5 millimeters, something like that? It's, it's 25. Well, I think it states 25 millimeter. I can yeah. check while we talk. Yeah, so uh, they have actually released two new products on the market. And this kind of bothers me simply because it, it it's another product that you have to buy if you want like if they had come out with a 22 millimeter version first that would have been the only sub tank i bought but now they've come out with two new sizes now this one is kind of interesting they've come out with the sub tank nano and the nano is 18.5 millimeters well why is it 18.5 millimeters what else is 18.5 millimeters the ice stick oh yeah so this looks very very nice on an eye stick um, and these two products would complement each other nicely um, the issue with this of course three mil capacity okay but just be forewarned this will work with the OCC heads that's the organic cotton coil heads it will not work with the rebuildable head so if you want something that works with a rebuildable head don't get this one that being said the stock heads are really easy to re-wick on the sub tanks uh, you can actually just pull the cotton material out of that coil through the side holes and put a new piece in. Now, in addition to the sub tank nano, they're coming out with the sub tank mini, 4.5 mil capacity, 22 millimeter diameter. Um, this is the one I'm really interested in. Same Airflow way. doesn't look like it's changed. One thing that has changed is they now have a new rebuildable head. This is the new RBA head. It's a mini RBA mm -hmm. head. It's different in appearance, much slimmer, and it will work in the uh, the mini. Now, my question is, will this mini RBA head work in the original sub tank? Because if it will, that will probably increase capacity. My suspicions is it won't because the chimney piece has to meet up with that, and it'd have to be the same length. But will but. it work with the standard, you know, the, the, the standard top? for the sub tank for the uh, coil uh, the ones that you, the coils that you buy because that's longer it may work that's possible that's possible it might work, it might work. um and, yeah and so it's confirmed it is 25 millimeter on the nose 25 millimeter did you have your calipers out <laughs> 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 you can tell somebody's a modder <laughs> So what's the news? What's the good word on the hashtag, Ed? So I finally, after all this time, I got a quote for the boards. And it's seven days after they receive parts. So now all I got, I've been going back and forth a little bit with the quotes. Um, and uh, now all I got to do is get uh, tell them to go, go for it. And... Um, my only thing I have to, I'm waiting for an email back from the company I got the batteries from because they've been out of stock on the batteries for like over two months. Wow. So I don't know if they're just special order. Um, I would imagine if I tell them I want to order 400 batteries, they're going to be like, okay. <laughs> um, but then it's my machinist as a phone call. Hey, let's make some hashtags. And um, yeah, just we're getting a little bit closer. And that's for great. those of you that may not remember or don't know, that's a hashtag. It will have a DNA 40 in it. And 20, well, as of right now, 2100 milliamp hour 
unless I have to source another battery pack, but I don't think I'll have to. I'm pretty sure they're going to have those batteries. I see uh, people in chat are talking about the new Joytech Delta 2, and I know Twisted420 just did a video on that, so if you want to check it out, go ahead and check his review out. Um, the reviews have been good so far. And it looks like a really good product, and uh, you know, honestly, with the issues that we're seeing with the sub tank, and it, to Kanger's credit, okay, or in a, is it Inakin Kanger? Who is it? Kanger, yeah. To Kanger's credit, they did respond to the video um, from TJ Applin, and they are going to be looking into it and seeing if they can revise that material. Uh, one of the things that I don't like about this, and I know somebody, I think it was somebody on Reddit used this analogy. They said, so Kangertech came out with a 25 millimeter, then they came out with the one you really wanted. <laughs> so now they're going to get more of your money for that incremental upgrade. Um, but, you know, that being said, if you don't have a sub tank yet, follow what's going on with the insulator. Hopefully they'll fix it. Somebody said that the insulator is almost identical to the insulator on a K-Fun. So I haven't taken it apart to see if it's the same size. Mine is actually at a buddy's house, and he has it filled with a very strong menthol and uh, citrus juice, and uh, he's going to see see what happens with that. Um, so that was really the last story for this evening. Um, there's a couple people in chat talking about the billow. Now, I've got the billow with the nano tank here. I'm loving this thing. I've been using this tank more than any other tank I've ever owned, uh, and that includes the K-Fun. Of course, I'm a fan of an area draw, so that has something to do with it, but this also wicks very thick juice uh, extremely well. So right now I've got some, I believe this, I'm not even sure what the ratio is on this Omerta, but I know it's uh, primarily... VG juice and I've used serial killer in it which serial killer it's all gone but that is a 90% VG juice uh, and that wicks very nicely so for the money I think it was uh, 35 bucks over at eSiggity uh, it's definitely worth a look Dane do you have any closing words you know no it's uh, you know just to, to touch back on e-liquid and things like that again I, most people are pretty picky about what they vape and as well they should be and people that have been vaping for a while and have been around know you know what a trusted vendor is and what a trusted vendor isn't and yeah you know caveat mTOR like greg brady was told by his old man and buyer you know the old buyer beware thing i i it helps to have a little discretion. I used to say a long time ago, and this was quite a few years ago, that we need to have a greater chasm of skepticism between us and our vendors. And I think that healthy skepticism helps. Yeah, definitely. And again, just going back to the straw poll. Okay, so now we've got 12 votes for yes, 12 votes for no. Um, this isn't shocking. This is, this is kind of what we expected going into this thing. And it's not to say that you're wrong if you don't want a shop that will mix you custom ratios. It's just for the betterment of the community during the this current situation, uh, the way I see it is they shouldn't be backroom mixing. Perception is key here and not yeah. ours, not the vendors. Not Yep. But the outside people who do not vape and the outside governmental entities, that perception is what's going to mold a lot of this legislation going forward. Very well said. Uh, so we're just about out of time. Ed, anything else you want to add? I want to say I love the straw poll. We need to do one every week. <laughs> we need to come up with something. Even if it's not vaping related, I really dig this. Oh, I got, I had, there's great news this week. For those of you who don't know, I love Toothless, How to Train Your Dragon, How to Train Your Dragon 2 won for Best Animated Feature, and they won a Golden Globe. Where's my sound effects, James? <laughs> oh, you, you want your applause? There we go. Applause, applause. That's right. 
Yeah, so I was like, yes, I'm not the only person. I'm not crazy for putting a dragon on my shoulder. <laughs> You're not a horse's ass. <laughs> We played that you, for somebody earlier. Yeah, you played you it for me because I won the award. Remember, I came last. In the, oh, that's in right. Facility. Do you have your award handy? And show your huh? your trophy. Oh yeah, it's right here. All right, good. Ed Ed won the uh, the last place trophy in his fantasy football league. <laughs> you did. I like it too. Yes. I was a little jealous. It had an unexpected feature. Yes, it had. See, we we ordered it thinking it was just a horse a horse butt but it ended up being I went, I went way too close didn't I <laughs> a bop your nose it's a bobble butt. butt and it says uh, four weddings and a funeral is our is our uh, name and it's the butt bringing up the rear bringing up the rear end award <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, so that's it for this week's show. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. We will see you next week. Uh, hopefully, you'll stick around for the after show. Again, go and check it out on Quest, uh, Quest Vaping, vapors.tv slash Quest Vaping, and we will see you folks over there. Thanks, Have everybody. Week. Good night. And that's the end of our show. We'll see you next week. Let's check in on the straw poll one more time. Oh, one more vote. Still neck and neck. Oh, no. The no's have got it, folks. 13 votes to 12 votes. See you next week, everybody. Good night.